Today we're doing a straight up graphics card video, something that I haven't really done in a while and I'm, I'm quite excited about. Now this graphics card was sent out by a viewer for the video and while it is a very interesting GPU, it doesn't entirely make sense to me why this thing exists. So maybe later on in the comment section below we can figure out together why they made this abomination of a graphics card. But before we get into that, it's time for today's video sponsor, Corsair and their K55 Pro RGB XT keyboard. The Corsair K55 Pro RGB XT is more than just a mouthful of a name. It is a membrane keyboard with per key backlight illumination, macro keys that work with Elgato Stream Deck functionality, which if you're into streaming is very, very useful. It's also got dedicated media keys with dedicated volume rocker buttons, so I, I really like that. It's also got a Windows key lock button, which if you press it, means that if you accidentally press the Windows key in the middle of a gunfight in a game, it won't drop you out of the game and ruin your life. If all of this sounds good to you, check out the link in the description below for the Corsair K55 Pro RGB XT, a keyboard that sounds like this. The specific graphics card that we're looking at today is the Vision Tech Killer HD 5770, which again was very kindly sent out by a viewer. Thank you very much. I had, I had a lot of fun looking at this abomination. Now, this graphics card was a mid-range-ish GPU from about 11 years ago, and we're going to see how it holds up in gaming today, despite the fact that it hasn't had driver support for like the last four or five years. So you, you need to use uh, legacy drivers for it, which does limit its functionality somewhat but it's still fine, you'll see later, it, it runs better than you'd expect considering that it's only got one gig of VRAM and, and, and is an old graphics card. But none of this is why this GPU is interesting. Because if you have a look at the PCB, you can see that it's had some weird horrible surgery done to it and it's been conjoined with an Ethernet card for some reason. More specifically, a killer E2100 gigabit Ethernet card. You can see on the back here, there is literally just an Ethernet port right here, uh, which does work, but we'll, we'll get into that a bit later. Now, this doesn't really make any sense to me, because this graphics card, like I mentioned before, came out about 11 years ago, which is quite long ago when it comes to tech, but Back then, gigabit ethernet was pretty common. Like, I can't imagine how many people were buying a mid-range graphics card 11 years ago and didn't necessarily have easy access to gigabit ethernet on their motherboard. Like, why does this thing exist? If anything, in my opinion, a Wi-Fi module would have made more sense because I feel like Wi-Fi integration is less common and it's a feature that a lot of people would really like. Now, aside from it seeming like a product that was brainstormed on a particularly rowdy absinthe binge, the Ethernet card does present some other problems. Considering the specific killer Ethernet that it is, it means that there aren't any easily found drivers that are validated for Windows 10. If you're running Windows 7, it's, it's much much easier to get this card up and running. But I did eventually find drivers that did work with Windows 10 and this killer Ethernet card, and we'll find a way to test its performance later on in the video. But before that, let's see how the graphics card part of this abomination performs in games in 2021. <laughs> Now obviously we're going to start off with GTA 5, um, I'm pretty sure it should be able to run this considering that it wasn't a particularly old GPU when GTA 5 came out. I don't know if you can see but there's a bit of a weird motion artifact, like it reminds me a little bit of like using the wrong shutter speed on a camera while filming, the motion looks a bit weird. Other than the weird motion artifact, GTA 5 is very playable. Next up, we have Battlefield 4. I really love this game. I used to play so much Battlefield 4 that Anna almost left me, but um, yeah, this is running really well. We've got 1080p low settings here, and this is usable for like multiplayer PvP. This is really good. So even one of the bigger maps like Goldman Railway runs very well. I've been playing Battlefield 4 for longer than I should be now, uh, just because I'm having so much fun. <laughs> Doom runs less well. Uh, this is not Eternal. Eternal wouldn't work because it's, it's, it's much newer. 
It's got that weird like slow-mo underwater effect that Doom gets when when it's got like a like a low frame rate. So yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't really call Doom very playable here. Well, surprisingly, Crawling Simulator actually launched. Um, I didn't think this was even gonna work at all, but yeah, this is, it's running. Not very well, I wouldn't really call this playable for like a multiplayer PvP game. Okay, let me just assume my natural position in this game. Yeah, he gets it. <laughs> Quinman gets it. I actually killed someone! It's because I was in this very tactical position. That's the only reason I did. <laughs> I feel like this is how Navy SEALs, <laughs> this is how Navy SEALs get around. Hey, look at this. CSGO at 1080p with what's pretty much competitive settings is running way better than I was expecting. Look at that. Now I normally say that with CSGO, unless you're averaging about 120 frames per second, it doesn't really feel great for like competitive play. Oh, just, but I don't know, something about the frame pacing that I'm getting here makes it feel surprisingly good despite the low frame rate, you know? Dota runs surprisingly well. We're on the second lowest preset at 1080p here, and yeah, we've got like a hundred plus FPS. Ooh, but to be fair, Dota runs well on like a Casio pocket watch, so uh, yeah, it's not really surprising. I was actually really surprised at how well this graphics card holds up for a lot of these games. Yeah, the driver support is limiting and it's only got one gig of video memory, which isn't great for 1080p in a lot of situations, but this kind of thing really shows the beauty of PC gaming. It's basically got an infinite back catalog of amazing games that you can play on like budget older hardware, which is awesome. But now we want to see how the network card holds up. I did think of a way that we can potentially get a better gaming experience using the network card part of the graphics card as opposed to the graphics card part of the graphics card. GeForce Now. Yeah, it works. It's quite blurry though and there's the occasional huge frame drop. Oh, big frame drop, many wolves, oh no. This is, this is a great gaming experience. Um, let me just, just jump away from the wolves. And then this is, this is going well. Oh no, it's, it's figured it out. Okay, we're back, we're back. We got 60 FPS again. Come on wolf, you're gonna be my wolf. B Wait a minute, let's just see if GeForce now runs any better with the integrated Intel ethernet in the motherboard. Um, okay, never mind. It's just GeForce experience is terrible now. <laughs> I, it, it was way better than this before. Like, oh wait, there we go. It's loaded back in. Wow, I remember GeForce now being way better than this. What What is going on here? Wow, GeForce Now seems to be going backwards. My memory of playing Assassin's Creed was much better performance and visuals than this, but maybe the network was just really under load while I did these tests. Um, so yeah, let me know down in the comment section below, A, why you think this graphics card exists, and B, if you have any experience with GeForce Now. Which brings me to the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, please do like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Go check out our new merch store linked in the description below. And until the next video, bye-bye.